Hi everyone, Suzanne Bornhurst here with your week four wrap up video and some discussion about the upcoming units. Let me first say I hope that you are all doing well with all the changes we've had to face in the last couple of weeks, um, working from home, becoming your children's teacher as well as their parent, and just dealing with all the changes that we've had to make and adjustments we've had to make to get through this. But I wanna let you know that I, you're all in my thoughts and um, remind you that we are all in this together and we're all doing our best and I think we'll get through it and, and, um, uh, and come out stronger at the end. So let's get to this week's wrap up video. First, let me say you did a great job in this week's discussion forum identifying the strategies that were used, um, who the target market was, and the appeals, what types of appeals we, that were used. Um, as a little bit of a wrap, um, summary here, I wanna kind of uh, pull it all together for you. The strategy of emotion is to get people to care about your topic, okay? Specifically about your topic. And to make them care, you must use some kind of an appeal. And we looked at those appeals, three appeals, and they were association, self-interest, and identity. This story used the Mother Teresa effect because her philosophy was to get, to get people to care about the masses, you first have to get them to care about an individual. And they proved that to us in the text by telling us a story uh, about an experiment about using data and statistics. They asked people to read, um, an inf uh, they sent people a letter using data and statistics to tell them about um, hungry people. One group saw the letter, one group saw a story about an individual little girl named Rokia and saw and heard her story about her hunger. The individuals who saw the data eventually gave a dollar and 14 cents, but the individuals who saw the young child got two, gave $2.38 instead. So this speaks to how an emotional message works because it appeals to something in our makeup that speaks to us. And we don't all react the same way. We don't all react to data and we don't re all react to data in concrete details, depending on what it is you're trying to convince us of. Um, we all don't act, react the same way because we all come from a different place. Our experiences are different. Our, our culture is different. Our upbringing is different. So we all react to stories or to any messages, depending on where we are and our, where we're coming from. So what is the key to this particular strategy? The key is knowing your audience. Ask yourself, what appeals to the group you're speaking to? Will emotion work for them? Will emotion with truth work? Remember, that's a very key component of um, the emotional strategy. Emotions with truth work differently than the fallacy of emotion. If you throw lies in there, people are gonna be skeptical. Or does this particular group you're speaking to need more concrete information that's credible, okay? Remember now, these are all success principles. Your final project demands that you identify which of the success principles will work, will work to convince your particular audience. Your audience analysis that you did last week should have started to help you identify that. For some audiences, what will convince them is gonna be data, credible and, and data is credible and concrete evidence. Um, I'm gonna give you an, a couple of examples. If you've decided you wanna improve a website for a particular organization, how will you prove to them that your idea is credible? What will you show them? Well, you need to show them concrete information that's available by research. You need to show them concrete information that shows that if they improve their website, they will get increased traffic to their website. Therefore, they will get more customers, more um, click-throughs, uh, possibly more um, daily traffic to the website. Another example would be, let's say you feel there's a need for more employee training. How are you going to prove to them that their customer service will improve and so will their customer retention if their employees are trained better? Well, you're going to need to show them some concrete data because you can't just do it by emotions. Look, I know this for sure. You know, I know because I work there. That's not enough. You need to show them something concrete. Audience, um, audiences usually for this particular type of 
um, opportunity message that you're giving, those audience usually are made up of people who are, have a stake in the business, like a manager, an owner, or a department head. So those people usually don't respond to emotion because their business is at stake and they really respond to concrete details. What's going to increase profits? For other audiences, an emotional hook will work, may work with, a, with an appeal because they care about your idea. Okay, they may not know about your company or your organization, but they already care about its cause. We just did a, vid, a forum on hunger. We all care about people being hungry. No one wants us, no, we don't want anybody to go hungry. Um, why do we give people on the street a dollar when they ask us because they haven't had something to eat? We care about that. So how do we use then emotion to do that effectively? Well, in unit five, we're going to move on to the next success principle, which is stories. Stories can be emotional and they can, they, they can use emotional appeals. For example, the video we just watched is a story about a family. It's a story about survival. It's about struggle. It's about the needs of a family. It's about a mom whose daily life is full of worry for her children. Stories are memorable especially because they appeal to us via one of, those one of those appeals we just learned, by association, by self-interest, or by ident identity. Right now, we're hearing many stories about how strangers are responding, to, are responding in this coronavirus crisis. Stories that we can all relate to about children out of school, moms and dads becoming teachers as well as parents, our elderly parents that are alone that we can't see, nurses and doctors who don't have enough equipment to take care of the people that are sick and those nurses and doctors are getting sick themselves. These stories appear, appeal to us because we're all in this together, right? Every one of us has a part right now. Um, if we do our part, we can help stop the spread of this virus. So these stories that we're hearing, they appeal to us. I don't know about you, but I know every time I see something about children that need lunches or I'm, I'm putting my hands in my pockets and emptying my pockets for whatever I can do because I can't be there to help. I can at least give some money. Another way stories can be used is to build credibility with the audience and they can be unexpected. So you can use stories in that, not just for emotional appeals, but also for credibility and unexpectedness. This week, we're going to learn more about how stories can make your message stick. Maybe a story could convince your audience for your final project. What, think about what can you tell them that will grab their attention? And what can you do that appeals to their self-interest or their identity? For this week, you don't have an assignment this week, but for this week, we have two forums. The first forum is one where you will craft your own story. And the, and the format is a 60-second elevator speech. You are to tell your story to a stranger in under 60 seconds. Okay, now the stranger you might sort of know because that's the person you're going to ask, ask for something. The something you're going to ask for your story is why should you get that job or that promotion or something else that you really want? Like, why should that girl you've been going out with for three years <laughs> accept your proposal for marriage and why aren't you, haven't you done it yet? But that, that could be an example. Why should, she take, why should she accept your proposal for marriage now? So you need to try to craft a story for her that would be in under 60 seconds. Be sure that you listen to the videos and the podcasts that are in the unit because they're really, really helpful for helping you develop this 60 second um, elevator speech. And remember that this is a great exercise for your final project because it's gonna help you narrow down the core or the purpose of your final project, of your message to your particular audience. Um, and uh, give, it's also gonna give you some practice using the success principles. So when you do your elevator speech, make sure you remember to tell them what it is about you that is different from other people. And always remember when you're done with your speech, when you get to the end, you wanna ask for what it is you wanna ask for. Don't just say, don't give me a list of all your skills and then at the end say, thank you very much for your time. No, 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 that's not a sticky elevator speech. You wanna say, okay, I, 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 this is why you should hire me or I, I expect to hear back from you or I want you to hire me. You need to 
like come to a conclusion that way. So um, there's also two forms, so make sure you do the second one. So one more time, good job in the forms this week. You all did a, a really excellent job in the forms. And um, remember that, that I'm thinking about you. I know we can do this. Um, we are all in this together. And I believe that we will come out even better at the end when this is all over. So have a really nice weekend, everybody, and I'll see you in the forums. Thanks very much for your time.